Welcome to Christ Church. Thank you for joining us in Sunday morning worship. We're happy you are here. Good morning. I welcome you to our online service uh, for Christ Church Episcopal. We're glad that you're joining us, and if there's anything we can do in your walk of faith, uh, please let us know. Uh, Throughout this service, there are um, hosts that will be glad to pray with you, so if you have any special uh, prayer requests, uh, just uh, click request prayer and somebody will be with you to pray with you. I want to offer a welcome uh, that is our welcome statement here at Christ Church. We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, gay, filthy rich, dirt poor, or no obla inglés. We extend a special welcome to those who are crying newborns, skinny as a rail, or could use to lose a few pounds. We welcome you if you can sing like Andrea Bocelli, or if you are like our pastor who can't carry a note in a bucket. You're welcome here if you are just browsing, just woke up, or just got out of jail. We don't care if you are more Catholic than the Pope or haven't been to church since little Joey's baptism. We extend a special welcome to those who are over 60 but not yet grown up and teenagers who are growing up too fast. We welcome soccer moms, NASCAR dads, starving artists, tree huggers, latte sippers, vegetarians, junk food eaters. We welcome those who are in recovery or still addicted. We welcome you if you are having problems or if you're down in the dump or if you don't like organized religion. We have been there too. If you blew all your offering at the dog track, you're welcome here. We offer a special welcome to those who think the earth is flat, work too hard, don't work, can't spell, or because grandmas in town decided to show up on online church. We welcome those who are pierced, inked, or both. We have a special welcome to those of you who could use a prayer right now, had religion shoved down your throat as a child, or got lost in online traffic and ended up on our website by mistake. We welcome tourists, seekers, doubters, bleeding hearts, and we welcome you. Let us pray. God, your son, Jesus Christ, promised to be with us whenever we gather together in his name. We thank you for Christ Church and the love that holds us together. Make us eager to gather for worship in person or online. Inspire us to learn and grow spiritually as individuals and as a faith community. We seek knowledge of your will for us. We pray for the strength and courage, the wit and wisdom, and the humor and creativity to follow Jesus, love people, and change the world. Amen. Continue now with our gathering hymn. Father's love for all, I bow to you, Jesus. 
Jesus, Lamb of God, saving love for all, Lord of heaven and earth, I bow to you, bow to you, I bow to you. Spirit of thy selfless love, make us of one true heart yearning for the glory of thy Son, Jesus, fire of justice blazing, gladdening light forever. Jesus, Lamb of God, saving love for all, Lord of heaven and earth, Father's love for all, I bow to you, Jesus, Lamb of God, saving love for all, Lord of heaven and earth, I bow to you, Jesus, Lamb of God, saving love for all, Lord of heaven and I bow to you, bow to you, bow to you, bow to you, I bow to you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. From the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 14 and 36 to 41. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. 
Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now, when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 people were added. The word of the Lord. I love the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray you, save my life. How shall I pay, repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill, fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. A reading from Peter's first letter, chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know these things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some woman of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Take my words and speak through them. Take our ears and hear through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire with love for you, our Lord and our Savior. Do you see this glass of water? Is it half full or is it half empty? What do you see? We'll come back to this in a moment. On the road to Emmaus, two of the disciples were talking, and a stranger joined them. But they did not recognize Jesus. I wonder why. 
It says their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Perhaps it's a test of faith. Now you knew that I would get faith in this homily somehow. As they continue on the road, they talk and share the story of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, but they didn't seem to believe the stories that the women had told them. But they seemed to enjoy the interpretation of the scriptures that Jesus was discussing. When they reached the village, they asked Jesus to stay with him, and when he broke bread, their eyes were opened and recognized him, but he vanished immediately. What an astonishing moment that must have been. Can you imagine? They rushed back to Jerusalem, seven miles, and told the other disciples of the encounter with Jesus and professed as if a declaration the Lord had risen. So what does that, this story have to do with this glass of water? It's all about the attitude that we have in our lives. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is among us each moment of each day, knowing everything about us, our every single thought. Do you believe in God's healing power? We pray for God's healing of family, friends, and our neighbors. Do you have the faith that we will survive this corona pandemic? Do you believe and have a positive attitude that you can get through this time of trial? Our internal attitude sometimes does more good for us than anything else. And we have the power to choose a positive attitude. In our Apostles' Creed, we recite... I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. This is all about faith. For me, and I hope for you, I believe that God will bring us through this shadow of the valley of death, out of the grips of the coronavirus that has touched the entire world. I believe that we will be stronger as, human, as a human race because we have been taken out of our routine of our daily lives and have been made to think and be creative to survive. Sadly, I believe there are still tough times ahead of us because of the decisions that are being made. But with our faith in God and His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, most of us will survive, just as the Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years and survived. Each day, we need to have faith, hope, and love. Just as, the disciple, as Jesus gave the disciples when he breathed the Holy Spirit upon them. That same Holy Spirit that dwells within each of us, each moment of each day. Our faith will look like 
a half full glass of water, seeing the positive in our lives, being thankful for what we have and what we are able to share with our brothers and sisters around us. We remembered the 25th anniversary of the bombing of the Murrow Building this past Sunday. 168 people were killed, more than 680 injured, and we survived. Some of the comparisons between the tragedy in 1995 and the events that are going through today, I want to share. We as a nation have been through trauma before, and we came through it, just as we will this time. We remember how the grace and resilience of Oklahomans inspired the world in 1995. We came together as a community, regardless of our differences. We were united. We shared values, patriotism, and common humanity. People stepped up to help those in need. The volunteers, the rescue workers, the support services, the list goes on. We remember the image of the Oklahoma firefighter who held that lifeless body of a child who died in the daycare center. Just as today, others are carrying out those who have died from the virus. We remember as we see the first responders, nurses, doctors, who go toward the aftermath of the coronavirus in the overrun of hospitals treating patients, putting their lives in jeopardy, just as the first responders, doctors, nurses, police, fire, volunteers ran into danger after the Oklahoma City bombing to help rescue and recover those who were trapped. We, all, we are all struck by the humility, grace, dignity, and faith, hope, and love of good people who have known and gone through dark days and have the strength, courage, and gumption to survive the tragedy. We need to have the hope that better times are ahead and that we will survive, all of us. And we still also have the hope that those who don't make it will, as it's written in John 14, have a mansion in heaven waiting for them, a place that Jesus has prepared for us with no pain, no disease, no suffering, and where we will be with Him once again. The strongest virtue of Jesus' teachings was love. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. The two great commandments. In this time of trial, frustration, anger, loneliness, hurt, creativity, family togetherness, the list goes on and on. There are so many uplifting stories of neighbors helping neighbors. Turning an automobile manufacturing company into producing masks and respirators. Clothing manufacturers making masks, gowns, gloves. People at home being creative and helping others with food drives, feeding the hungry, caring for the sick, teaching our youth making masks for doctors and nurses, donating snorkel masks to protect the eyes of those treating others, teachers having parades for their students. And again, that list goes on and on. Those who put their lives on the line for someone who is sick, risking their own lives to save others, that is what love thy neighbor is all about. I share this message as a message of hope, love, and faith. I hope that I will be with you all together very soon in community 
and celebrating the success of overcoming this pandemic. I share this message with you because I truly love each and every one of you as family, as God's family. I have the faith that we all will be better soon. I always believe the glass is half full. So God bless each of you. And as Sergeant Joe Gettier of Hill Street Blues would say at the beginning of each police shift, let's be careful out there. Amen. We continue with the affirmation of our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world, especially all saints in Duncan. Lord, in your mercy. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us, especially for the birthdays of Heather Zaludic, George May, Brad Smith, Cynthia Berry, Nora Brewer, Anthony Marshall, Thomas Smith, Chris Roper. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy of your salvation. Especially for Mia, Kathy, Robbie, Andrea, Wheeler, Misty, Sonia, Marilyn, John, Tori, Bill, Charles, and for those who have coronavirus, for those who are susceptible, and for our medical professionals, we pray for those who have lost jobs or income. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. You have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
There was a tradition in the early church that during the season of Easter, one way of marking the power of Christ's defeat over sin and death is that we did not say a general confession of sin. Uh, this is not a license to, to sin, um, but it is just a reminder of the power of God's love that nothing, nothing can stop God's love for us. So the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. We're thankful for those who are gathering uh, virtually with us or maybe watching it later on YouTube or Facebook. We're glad that you are joining us. If there's anything that Christ Church can do to support you, to care for you, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out uh, to us and, and let us know. Um, if you are able to, uh, to give, we ask that you go to ChristChurchTulsa.org forward slash give and make a gift. You can also text Christ Church Tulsa to 73256 to make um, and uh, text to give. Um, and there's also a give box if you are watching this on the online church platform. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. During this time in which we are separated from one another, we are still reminded uh, that Christ comes to us um, spiritually, and we long and yearn for the time in which we will be able to receive Christ physically, and the bread and wine which we as Episcopalians believe is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So we continue now with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. In union, blessed Jesus, 
with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, and remembering particularly my own parish, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom in unending peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.